Husky fans, welcome into episode number eight of NIU Weekly. I am Andy Garcia, alongside the Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics here at NIU, Sean T. Frazier. And Sean, great to be back with you. And what a past weekend of sports, especially for football and getting the win here at Husky Stadium, 34-26 over Bowling Green. And Sean, you and me were on the sidelines talking about it. There's one thing to have depth. There's another to have depth, depth. And that's what NIU football has at the running back position where a, a running back can go down. You bring somebody back up like Jay Decker has over 200 yards rushing the ball. The, the team goes over 300 yards rushing the football. That was impressive last Saturday. It was, it was um, on a lot of levels. You know, we knew that uh, the passing game could be off uh, to some degree because we had what 25, 30 mile an hour wins. I don't know exactly why. Only thing I knew I, I saw people flying around um, and the wind was blowing them around. So I knew that was going to be a concern. Uh, but then, you know, take a look at the depth. You know, I think that the coach Hammock and staff has done a phenomenal job. Um, I won't say number one running back, number two in the running back, number three running back. We just have a number of running backs that all could be starting. If you go to practice and you see uh, the, uh, the level of talent, dedication, um, competition he's created in a lot of the different rooms, a running back room, quarterback room. I can go on and on and on. And uh, we knew that this was going to be a possibility, but to see that people have a chance to step up when their number is called, uh, it's great to see. It doesn't shock me that the outcomes, because I do have the benefit of seeing uh, this level of talent, this level of uh, stick to itness, the grit, the determination. Um, but to do it when your number is called, uh, uh, and you haven't been in the so-called starting role because you yeah. haven't repped it in that way, this tells you the level and the upside of what this what this program is all about right now. Yeah, so big win over Bowling Green. Huskies 3-0 in the MAC, Only undefeated team in the Mid-American Conference. Get ready to go on the road. Mount Pleasant, Michigan taking on Central Michigan this Saturday. 11 a.m. kick Central Time. It'll be on ESPNU. And we'll also be on the network, 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Bill Baker, Mark Lindo, myself on the call. So we've got that coming up. But also another uh, thing that's happened this week, Sean, that I want to mention, uh, it was a shout out to some of the NIU student athletes, especially members of the Student Athlete Diversity and Inclusion Committee. All week we've seen posts on social media from them as part of the NCAA Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Week. Uh, and Sean, a, a great job by these student athletes. Their statements, their videos throughout the week. And I know this is true. Uh, and dear to your heart. And I know this has to be a, a, a fun week to, to see uh, these social media posts and the videos about the, uh, the diversity and the inclusion. Yeah, it, uh, student athletes do a fantastic job. You know, it's diversity and inclusion, uh, lifelong mission for me. I appreciate the week long celebration by our student athletes that uh, want to talk about the, the effects and the advantages as well as what's going on in our country. You know, DEI is extremely important. As we know, we live it, we breathe it. Uh, but to see the student athletes, especially our younger student athletes, engaging in, the, in this level of discourse around DEI and specifically uh, engagement with all uh, of our stakeholders, uh, campus, community, et cetera, is a great thing. It shows the leadership. It shows the student athlete voice. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, that was great to see this week. And we get ready again. Football taking on uh, Central Michigan this week. We've got some great guests. We're going to start with football. We're going to talk to Jason Anye Buagu, who is the assistant coach. He works with the tight ends and his former student athlete here at NIU, all MAC offensive lineman back in the late 2000s. We're going to talk to him about being back here on campus and coaching with Thomas Hammock. We're going to talk basketball for Sean Burno, head men's basketball coach at NIU, getting ready for his first season less than three weeks away from their first game. He will join us and also going to talk a little Huskies invest. I know that's also true and dear to your heart too, Sean. We're going to talk to TJ Fuerbach, part of Huskies uh, staff here with uh, Sean. We're going to talk about Huskies invest and why that is important for NIU athletics. But first things first, let's talk some football. Husky football is on a roll, a 3-0 and start, getting ready for Central Michigan this week as we are joined by Jason Anyabuagu, assistant coach, works with the tight ends, but also He's an alma mater here at NIU. He was a student athlete, offensive lineman, all MAC offensive lineman here in the late 2000s. And coach, great to get you on. And uh, first things first, uh, it's great to have you back here on campus. Your first year as assistant coach back here, 2021. And one of the little tidbits I like is that it comes like Thomas Hammock back when he was an assistant coach here at NIU. 
Was it true that you were his first recruit that signed on here back then? Is that true? I was. Uh, That's awesome. I was the I was the first player he signed. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a funny story to it. Uh, I made it really tough on him, too. Um, you know, I knew I wanted to go to NIU, then a couple other schools showed some interest and thought I might want to go there. But he made it very clear that, uh, you know, my future <laughs> needs to come through DeKalb. So uh, we, got it. we got it right at the end of the day. What has it meant to come back and, and coach here at your alma mater? Uh, everything. Um, this place is uh, – it's meant so much to me. Um, Pretty much every direction my my life has kind of taken me is because of you know where NIU has sent me. Um, so an opportunity to come back and work with the young men here and just see them you know enjoy this uh, this moment in their life uh, and bring back so many memories uh, that I remember with my teammates and the guys that I played with and uh, just what this university has done for me, man, it means everything. Sean, yeah, it's great. That's great stuff. It's good. It's great to to get to know you, Jason, and. Uh, what you mean to our program um, and understanding, you know, the hard way and, and all the process that goes into that. So talk to me about the tight ends. Tell me about the tight ends. I want all the secret sauce relative to the team. I want you to tell me about, you know, what they're working on, what you like, the fundamental components that you are, are, are giving them, you know, the secret sauce to help our offense roll. So talk to me about, about our tight ends. Well, I mean, uh, uh, it's a special group, you know, first and foremost. They, uh, they're they a, a cast of characters, I like to call them. Uh, so many different personalities, but, um, you know, when they all come together, it's a, it's a, it's a big, uh, big role that we provide for our offense. Um, you know, what you guys seen over these first couple of weeks and uh, as we've moved through the season is, um, you know, what we can be in the run game, the extension of the old line and being able to um, put multiple tight ends on the field and, and having a tremendous run game. Um, but I think what you'll kind of see here um, as the season goes is we'll have a chance to um, show you a little bit more of the range that we have. Um, you know, we, we were a little banged up, but, you know, we're starting to work to get back healthy. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're just they're just an awesome group of dudes. They come to work every day. They work hard. Um, I'd say what we're working at most is, is just, you know, continuing to be uh, the Swiss Army knife. Um, where, you know, wherever you need us, that's where the tight ends are going to be. Um, and we just want to be accountable. We want to, when our number gets called, we want to be able to make plays. Um, and then when, you know, when you, when you need us in other uh, areas, special teams as well, we want to be able to do whatever we can to help the team. And that's, that's the kind of personality they have on the team. Uh, you'll see them hanging around with old linemen and then you turn around and look, they're with the receivers, they're with the quarterbacks. They're just, you know, they're just a group of guys who just, you know, they love football and they love NIU. So whatever we can do to help the program and help the team, that's what we kind of do. Some of the names at that tight end position, Miles Joyner coming from Youngstown State, uh, Liam Sorhan, who's been around a while here, and, and Tristan Tavis, who was a linebacker last year, moved back to tight end. Just some of the names. Uh, what does each of those guys bring to this team? Uh, so I'll start with Miles. I mean, Miles is kind of the, 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 the 2021 hybrid tight end that everybody's looking for. Um, you know, he's 260 pounds, so he can he can line up in line and, and, and block the ends. Um, but he's also athletic enough to split out in, uh, in space and, and be a mismatch problem for linebackers and safeties. Um, you know, he's, you know, uh, you know, he's battled through some injuries, but I, I think, you know, he's he's at the point now where we're, we're actually about to see exactly what, you know, Miles Jones can bring to the table. And um, I think he has a really, uh, really good chance to have a, a good finish to our season. Um, Liam's he's he's a little bit more of our, our inline blocking tight end. He's just a bigger guy, you know. He's, you know, I joke with him all day. I call him seven foot tall. You know, I tell him, you know, I'm always yelling at him, get his pads down, quit being seven foot tall. But um, he's long, um, and his length gives people problems, you know. And uh, you know, he seems kind of, you know, that height makes him look like he's kind of skinny. But you know, he's he's 260 pounds as well. So um, you know, he's been able to do a good job of, you know, in our run schemes. Man, he's done an awesome job with, you know. Sometimes we joke around, but he looks like another tackle out there. Um, and when he can play physical in the run game, it just gives us another body um, that we can go, uh, put out there and create mismatches. And then uh, Tristan, he's kind of he's, he's the best of both worlds. You know, he's really athletic. Um, uh, he's still kind of growing into his frame. Um, so, you know, I think in, in, uh, in these couple of years coming up, he'll he'll be a little bit heavier, but um, he's able to split out in the pass game and play. You know, he's, he's moved around and played some fullback for us, too. Um, but, you know, him bouncing back from offense to defense kind of last year, I think it just never gave him a chance to kind of settle in. And I think what you're seeing now um, is he's having some success because he's he's been able to settle into the tight end position. Um, and he's been really good for us all year. And he's, he's continuing to develop. And uh, he's going to be a really good player in our program for a while. Sean? Yeah, so that's yeah, – you, you, you gave a good breakdown of our guys. Um, 
So let me switch a little bit because we we tease a little bit. We've got three alums on this on this uh, coaching staff, a head coach being one of them. How important is it to you uh, to pass on, you know, the tradition of Husky football? What's that passion look like? And how do you relay that uh, to your student athletes? Uh, I mean, it's everything. Um, you know, this is a program that has seen so much success, um, you know, uh, over the last, you know, 10 to 20 years. Um, and it didn't start that way. You know, I, I, I remember when I first got here hearing stories about, you know, kind of where NIU was a program um, and then to just be a part of that trans transition. Um, you know, I, I try to tell those guys stories all the time about the real hard way. Um, and, you know, and they kind of sit there and look at me like, I, you know, like I'm the old guy, and you know, telling the old stories. But, um, you know, it's to be able to, to give back to the university that gave you so much. Um, and that's where my passion comes from. And I just try to make sure that I express that to them in everything we do. So any opportunity we, uh, I have for those guys to, you know, be good teammates um, on and off the field and, um, you know, be in the community. Um, you know, those are the things that, you know, have made NIU football, you know, what it is. And um, for our program to keep going where it is, it starts with guys wanting to be back around our program. Guys who have came here and worked to earn their degree and had, uh, you know, had tremendous careers here in our program. They have to come back. We have to get guys back around the program. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to do everything I can to get guys I've played with. The more, um, you know, I've been I've been getting them to come to games and come support. And the more we can do that as, as Huskies, it just could, keeps all our traditions alive. Um, those same, you know, after those big wins, we get in that locker room, we celebrate it up. Those same chants and cheers are the same ones that, um, you know, I got to celebrate with my teammates and things like those continue to carry on when we have more guys around the program that know where this thing started and know where we want to take it. That's very well said, Coach. I, I want to talk about Central Michigan because we know the Chippewas, they come in one of the top rushing defenses in the MAC. You guys want to run the ball. What are some keys for you guys on the offensive side to get the win against Central Michigan this Saturday? Um, well, you know, it, everything, it, it starts up front. You know, our offensive line has done a tremendous job. You know, Coach D.A., he has done a tremendous job with our offensive line and, um, you know, with the tight ends as well. We've, we've been able to uh, come in and, and just establish physical football. And that's, it has to be, that can be no different this week. Central Michigan is a, a tremendous front seven. Um, you, when you turn on the tape, you see him flying around and making plays and tackles for losses in the backfield. And um, we got to step up to the challenge. Um, I think it's going to be a big week. Um, for us as a group and us as a team to to kind of, you know, go out there and, and, and improve upon what we've kind of put on tape so far this year. But, um, you know, they 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 propose a really big challenge for our team because, again, they're really good at what we're really good at. So, you know, it's one of those battles where you're going to kind of see that clash. Um, but definitely we have to go out there and establish the line of scrimmage. Um, we got to establish a, a physical play of uh, at the line of scrimmage. And if we do that, I think we'll have a chance to be um, right there in the ball game, like we've been all year. I like the full circle of your life, right? You start, you finish off right here, being a student athlete, 2009, all Mac offensive lineman here in NIU. Pro circle, you come back and you're an assistant coach. And uh, coach, it's been great to have you back. I know you're having a lot of fun. The tight ends are playing great. Continued success. Good luck against Central Michigan. We'll hopefully talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Appreciate you for having me. From football, we go to men's basketball. The season starts less than three. Weeks away at Washington, I know Coach Berno is excited. We're glad to get him on, Coach. Great to have you on the show. And I know you as a coach, you want practice, right? You want to practice, especially with a new squad, like getting everyone together. You want as much practice time as you can. But now you're only less than three weeks away from an actual game, getting out to Washington, taking on the Huskies. How excited are you to see your team get on to a court that's not here in DeKalb, to go on the road and take on somebody else? Super excited. But as a coach, you still want more practice. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're excited. Uh, we actually got a, uh, ex uh, a scrimmage, closed door scrimmage this uh, coming Saturday, Saturday versus Milwaukee, which will give us a, you know, a little test, see what we need to change, uh, things we need to improve on, things that we're doing well uh, before we head into our exhibition. But our guys are competing at a high level. We're super excited, a little bit ner nervous. Obviously, going on the road, playing a, a power five a, a opponent is, is a challenge in itself. But it's a, it's a good uh, nervousness because they want to go out and compete and, and perform well. I know since you took the job back early 2021, you've been on the road getting players, uh, getting recruits. When did it change, Coach, when you guys got this the squad back, what, June or July on the court? When did it change from trying to recognize who you had on the team to building a game plan and getting ready for the regular season? I would say it started actually in April. 
Cool. Um, you know, obviously, once I, I, I obviously had seven guys uh, returning, um, you know, we, we got one guy, Ed, um, late. Uh, so I had a pretty good idea of what the talent level was, uh, what the skill level based on individual instructions. And so once we got going in June, it was now trying to formulate a team uh, and figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, how do we best utilize the talent that we have to take advantage of their strengths? Um, so it, it's been a it's been a learning process, uh, especially when you take over. You're trying to implement a, a a new style of play, a new culture. It takes its time, and every day is 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 a you know obviously is, is a step in the right direction. Sean, yeah. So talk to me about Rashawn. Um, what you like so far? You know, we had a chance to see an open practice. We we went off with our 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 kickoff event um, that we had uh, and um, heard, heard you speak on a number of occasions, watched you coached uh, upfront and personal and attention to detail guy that you are. Tell me what you like so far with this, with this group of uh, student athletes. Just their attention uh, to, you know, obviously what the goal is. A lot of times when you come out, come for a different program, you're trying to implement something. There's a learning curve. Um, so these guys are picking up uh, the information. They're retaining it a lot more than I thought. Um, you know, we had a morning session where we typically walk through things. So we try to create an environment where things are deja vu for these guys. Um, but just I think the competitive fire, um, the guys that are returning, they want to win at a high level. So these guys are, are, are in the forefront of, of changing uh, the, the culture of the program and they bought in from day one. So that, I think that was, that's probably the, the, the number one thing, just how much the older guys want to go out and win and change the mindset of people who've seen them in the last couple of years. I think when I've seen practices coach and heard you talk like, yes, it, it's a team game and it's an individuals amongst that team, but you got to play for your teammate next to you. You got to be responsible for the guy that you're playing next to because you can't do it all by yourself. And I've seen that in practice so far that it's been a team effort. Yeah, it's going to take each individual to go make a shot or get a rebound, but you got to play as one. I've seen that so far. Is that something that stands out with what you want to do? Yes, and it's something that I, I truly believe, um, especially in any, anything, right? No one can do it by themselves. And so uh, the teams that we face on paper are, are more talented, and so we're not going to just go out and, and knock Washington out with one punch. It has to be a collective approach and it has to be for 40 minutes um we're not the most talented team on uh in the mac but we'll be the most connected team and our goal is to make teams beat us not beat ourselves and so it it, it brings buy-in when everyone's moving towards the, the same common goal everyone's doing their job if you get five to eight guys to do that every night you have you put yourself in a uh, in a position to win a lot of games and that's ultimately the goal so we know you've got the scrimmage coming up, you talked about, and then we've got the, the exhibition game versus St. Francis coming up on Saturday, October 30th, day before Halloween. What do you want to see from your team from not just the scrimmage, but also the exhibition before you get ready for the regular season? Just improvement. Um, we spend a lot of time watching film, um, very, very detailed in, in our approach. So want to limit the, the, the remedial mistakes that we've made early on, see certain guys take steps and, and uh, uh, a step closer to what I think the team and how the team should look and perform. So for us, it's, it's just judging ourselves, right? We understand this is going to be a process, so we're not so consumed with the, the result, but just how do we get better every day? Are we taking steps in the right direction before the ball goes up for real on the ninth? And that's how we've, we've been judging practice. That's how we grade practice. And that's how these guys uh, are, are moving forward is to get better than what we what we were last time we stepped out on the floor, whether it's practice, film, individuals, or in games. Mm -hmm. Sean? So what's your battle cry for our fan base? You know, there's a lot of things going on right now. Um, why come to the Convocation Center? Why specifically watch your team play? What can, what can you give us in the fan base? Talk right to the – don't talk to me, Rashawn. You see me every day. <laughs> talk to the fan why come out and see men's basketball in the Convocation Center? I, I think for the for the fans to see 13 connected guys moving in the same direction, um, you're going to see a lot of high-level plays. You're going to see team a team that's going to play hard for 40 minutes. Um, it's going to be a fun, exciting brand of basketball. We're going to play up and down. Uh, we're going to force tempo. 
and we're a blue collar city. So you're going to see a blue collar team from day one. We're going to punch first uh, versus Washington, Indiana, Marquette, whoever we line up with, they're going to get hit first. And that's just an, our mentality. And that's what we do every day. We talk about being aggressive. We talk about being men amongst boys in the paint on the perimeter. And we're just going to force our will on whoever we face. And if they like a tough, hard-nosed brand of basketball that's fun, a lot of threes, a lot of transition baskets, uh, playing out in, in, in space and pace, I think this is an unbelievable opportunity to see uh, these young men perform on a nightly basis. Great, who are some great. of the newcomers? Who are some of the newcomers, Coach? We should. I mean, we know the Trenton Hankersons, the Caleb Thorntons, the McCoys, the Crumps. Some of them have already been here, but what are some of some of the names we are going to start to recognize very early in the regular season? Um, I would say uh, Chris Austin, who came in uh, from Arizona State, who's going to be a really uh, live body uh, at the five spot. Uh, Noah Khan, who's a five foot ten, five foot eleven, super explosive guard out of Houston, uh, who's a freshman. Uh, Dawishi Hunter, who's about six three and a half, six four, out of Indianapolis, a really good shooter. Um, I, I, I like our team. Keyshawn Williams, who's a local kid, um, is going to surprise a lot of guys. He went to Tulsa, transferred. Came back home, had him for four years. He's a kid who has high major talent, high major athleticism. Um, he's going to be a, a treat to coach. Um, all these guys have the potential to be all MAC type players, right? But you know, as as we stated early in in, in a Zoom, it's about team. And yeah. if everybody do their job, these guys can go out and have a productive season. We'll go out and have a productive season. Fans are going to see it, Sean. Accountability is a big part of this team. It's going to be, and it's going to bring wins for this program. What's it meant for you, Coach, to come back to the state of Illinois and to come back here and coach, and, and coach not too far from your hometown? It, it means a lot. Obviously, um, I was a boy when I got to the state, left a man. Um, you know, all of my, you know, um, great personal memories was in the state, um, being in Chicago. Uh, my family started here. So I, I'm super excited. Um, I understand the past. Uh, of, of, of the program. And, and my goal is to bring this thing to new heights, not just myself, the coaching staff, uh, the administration. Um, and I, I'm just happy to, to be, the, you know, obviously the front of, you know, uh, the car driving this thing. But it, it's, it's not just me, the entire program, the people that, uh, that work alongside me all have a hand and bring this thing to where we want it to be. And that's one of the premier programs in the MAC. Sean, I'll give you the final question. That's good. I think that's very well said. You know, uh, just kind of watching this progress, you know, the, the progress that has happened thus far. You know, I think for for you, uh, you, you said it really well about the brand of basketball that you bring. But is there anything else? Is there anything else that you haven't you know, told us about uh, th these young Huskies or your coaching staff or or anything that that, that comes to mind that uh, we need to know as we go into this basketball season? I, I think this, the, the players are all um, great young men uh, that committed to, to getting their education. Um, we're going to do a lot in the community uh, coming up here shortly. Um, I, I think these guys want to represent the brand and their last name uh, equally. And so I'm super excited about that. Um, my staff are, are, are some of the hardest working guys that you can be alongside. Um, Steve Christensen, who left a really, really good Triton Community College program to join my staff says a lot because, he, you know, he had his own thing and he could have stayed a head coach and won championships, but he believed in getting this thing right. Uh, and he wanted to have a, a, a hand in it. And he's done a phenomenal job uh, in, in bringing, you know, young prospects that we currently have uh, committed to us. Like he's been a, a, a strong driving force in that. Uh, Drew Gladstone coming in from Indiana, high major experience, uh, phenomenal basketball mind. Um, he's been tremendous, better than I thought. Uh, Brandon uh, coming in from Towson uh, comes with a wealth of experience, East Coast ties. Uh, Matt being at DePaul for the last 10 years has high major experience from an organizational standpoint. So the staff that I comprise all serves a part and they all are, are thriving in their role. That allows me to just focus on big picture stuff and really hone in on trying to develop our young men on and off the court. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but mainly I'm excited to show the community what the new Huskies look like um, and, and change some of the perception of, 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 of the past. And, and my guys are all bought into doing that. And the one thing I'll, I'll say before we end it, my guys are always willing to start over the next day. And that's the important thing about life and about sports. One day you can be a hero, tomorrow you can be a goat, right? So living in the middle, 
or be willing to start the process over. And I'm, I'm excited that they grasp that and understand it. Again, the community can see you next time on Saturday, October 30th, this exhibition taken on St. Francis. Season tickets start as low as $80 for men's hoops, $35 for women's hoops. NIUHuskies.com or call 815-753-PAC. Looking forward to packing the Convocation Center with men's and women's basketball. And Coach, great to get you on. Can't wait to see practice later on today and uh, continued success. And again, you've got some more practices. It's not the season yet. Got a couple more practices before uh, we get going. So uh, continued success and looking forward to the team. Thank you, guys. Well, Sean, it's that time again this year when we get to Huskies and best. Very important to what is to what NIU athletics needs, money, investing. We'll talk about it with TJ Fuerbach. Now in his fifth year here at NIU. It's fifth year. Been here a long time. That makes you great. See how we got our gray beards, Sean and I? That starts getting you a gray beard, TJ. Listen, if you look close <laughs> enough, the light maybe not be showing it, but I think I'm well on my way. <laughs> now, TJ, Senior Associate Athletic Director, Development and Revenue Generation, big part of Huskies and Best. And I'll kind of just jump right in. And what is Huskies and Best? We, we know about it, TJ, but what is it? Uh, uh, how long has it been around? And, and what's different for this year? Yeah, first, thanks for having me on, guys. Um, it's hard to believe we're already entering year five of Huskies and Best, but uh, like anything, you always want it to be a little bit bigger and better. As a lot of folks know now, we've started uh, this in 2017 with a modest goal of $100,000, not knowing really how it would go. Uh, next year, we moved the goal to 200 and 300. And last year, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, we made it more of a elongated campaign, basically throwing everything but the kitchen sink at it because the need was so great. So this year, We'll go back to a little bit more of its roots of just fundraising, uh, fewer ancillary things uh, along with that. But we got a week long goal of $350,000 and hoping our supporters will step up like they have done for us time after time. But uh, I guess getting back to your original question, what is Huskies Invest? At the heart of it, it's simply a time to be generous and invest in our student athletes, programs and facilities. We've often talked about it and probably on this forum previously that so much of what we do is transactional. And this week is really a time just to be philanthropic. It's a time for us to share stories of our student athletes, highlight them and their accomplishments, and really just celebrate NIU athletics. And then who does it go to? Who does it benefit with Huskies Invest? Sure. Uh, pretty, pretty plain and simple, Andy. Students and programs is really really the answer. So everything we do on a fundraising side within the Husky Athletic Fund is geared towards better supporting our student athletes and our sport programs. Sean, I mean, you talked about, again, it's our fifth year doing this with Huskies Invest and TJ does a great job with it, but it is crucial to what you guys are trying to do here at NIU. Yeah, yeah, it's phenomenal. TJ has done a great job, just a tremendous job. Him and his staff, um, they've embraced the concept. Uh, it's it's not something totally new in our business, but right. he's taking it to the next level. Good old fashioned elbow grease, you know, getting it done the hard way. You know, it's we, the football team talk about the hard way. Well, you know, obviously when you're talking about uh, going out there, making an ass, talking about the story, making sure there's an athlete narrative, you know, understand the impact. The impact is extreme. Okay. We, we all know the stories about the fact that we were in a budget impasse from 15 to 17. And we get better off of that. And all of a sudden we go into COVID. So these things are real. Uh, our philanthropy, our support, uh, the level of impact that Huskies Invest has made in all of our, quite frankly, all of our fundraising initiatives is extreme because as we wean off of uh, support from the university. We have to supplement that. We can't take a back step in, in academic success or athletic success. So we need the extra money, the money to subsidize what's lost. So, and we've been known to, to do a lot more with less, but again, to be competitive within our conference and uh, be relevant in the, in the national spotlight, this level of financial support is critical. So, and again, kudos to TJ, his staff. Um, we have fun with it. You blew the doors off of Huskies Invest uh, during a pandemic. I don't know how the hell you're going to be able to top that, to be perfectly honest with you, but you do know that's where the expectation is, my friend. And, and you are a Houdini when it comes to that. So God bless you and all the hard work that HAF, you, and everyone, quite frankly, who has given to the effort. Just good stuff. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. TJ, how can people donate? How can people get involved? 
Yeah, I think, um, I guess just from an involvement piece first, I think every individual in, or business kind of has a different situation, different passions. Uh, it's so important, I think, to understand what you're passionate about with regard to NIU athletics. Once you know that, we have an unbelievable site built out for Huskies Invest that is essentially a menu of items from our most pressing needs of unrestricted gifts to all of our sport programs, including marching band, uh, student rec, silverettes, to a number of facility projects we have that we're trying to address. So, I mean, as Sean mentioned, and kind of in full transparency, we've been trying to stay afloat for quite some time, but it's, it's really time to move forward. Uh, I just had Coach Berno on, I believe, and they have a locker room project uh, in the works with both programs. We have a much needed indoor tennis project trying to bring uh, the finish line to the Walton Janice Owens Park project, softball dugout, and um, then another big time project that I'm only going to tease at this moment, but uh, really excited about and the benefits it will bring to our student athletes. So there's lots of ways to get involved. And, uh, but I do, Andy, if you don't mind, I uh, really do want to reiterate the need for unrestricted dollars as mm -hmm. I think sometimes there's a misconception that it goes to benefit our most high profile sports. And that's simply not the case. So all of our programs truly benefit uh, from the unrestricted gifts and it helps pay for team travel, cover budgets uh, for so many of our Olympic sports on top of still fighting our COVID shortfall. So uh, with that, and since it all counts during Huskies Invest, I think there's still other opportunities available for people to purchase courtside seats for basketball, Nelson suite for uh, men's basketball, stay cozy in a terrace for last home football game against Western Michigan. Uh, I mean, those are some more of the transactional pieces of it, but again, uh, everything counts during Huskies Invest. No gift is too small, no gift is too big, right? One thing I've been able to be around campus and see different teams, and as you mentioned, not just football and basketball, but everyone needs it. Everyone needs a little bit to, to gain, uh, you know, get more wins, but just get involved and be ready to practice and have an opportunity to participate at the highest level. And this is kind of what Huskies Invest helps. And again, no gift is too small, whatever you can give is great for Huskies Invest. What's the website, uh, TJ, that people can go to? Absolutely. You can go to huskyathleticfund.com and click the Give Now. You can go to the Donate header on our new NIUHuskies.com site. And click the direct link there to donate 24-7. If you are a social media savant like the two of you, uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you can. Uh, all of our sports, whether on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, will be extremely hard not to find a link. Uh, during Huskies Invest Week, Invest Week to donate to our programs there. Uh, or certainly pick up the phone and, and call Husky Athletic Fund at 815-753-1923, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Love, love to hear from you. Yep. Huskies Invest, TJ Fierbach does a great job with it. But you know what? He also has different roles, right? He's also the sport administrator for men's soccer. Hey. Uh, and, and that team is rolling right now, TJ. And I know you guys – that team's got a big trip coming up to Georgia this weekend. Take on two new Mac men's squads in Georgia Southern and Georgia State. But men's soccer just continues to roll. Yeah, Coach Juan and his uh, group continues to impress. Obviously ranked number 21st in the country this week. Uh, but as you alluded to, a couple of tough matches. I believe they got on the road at about 4 a.m. this morning to head down to uh, Georgia Southern and then obviously take on Georgia State here this weekend, which will be a, a big matchup before we wrap up here. Uh, and closed next uh, on the 30th against Akron. Well, great stuff, TJ, and, and, and thank you for everything you do. And again, you're one of the great guys here with Sean Frazier's staff and always take care of me. I appreciate that. And uh, hopefully Huskies Invest goes well. And again, everything counts, right? If you're a Husky fan, everything counts towards Huskies Invest. And I hope you can be able to donate and, and do that for us. So, TJ, appreciate the time. And uh, I'll see you around either a court, a stadium, or somewhere like that. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, fellas. Well, Sean, that was a fun show. Got a little football, got a little basketball. Huskies invest. We, we've shown why that is important as we wrap things up. But, uh, you know, we got to get going here. Women's golf. They're playing at the White Sands NCA Invitational this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Paradise Island, Bahamas. Uh, we missed that itinerary. We could have done the show from the Bahamas, but we, I got, we got football too. But hopefully women's golf has a, a good rundown in, in the Bahamas. Hopefully they can win the uh, White Sands Imitational. Uh, we uh, got a little football here on the road, Central Michigan. Uh, met, uh, volleyball is home on Saturday, taking on Toledo. That's at 4 p.m. in Victory Court. Uh, women's golf again on the road. Women's soccer at Ball State on Sunday. Now that's going to be on ESPN Plus 
if you want to watch that. And then Thursday, October 28th, women's soccer at Western Michigan. And we've got wrestling back here Thursday uh, with the red and black duel. So that'll be cool. That's at 7 p.m. in Victory Court. So we got a nice busy schedule. Uh, gets ready for We get ready for football. Central Michigan this Saturday, again, 1030 on the network, on the radio. Bill Baker, Mark Linda, myself, 1030 a.m. NIU taking on Central Michigan. Huskies try to maintain their undefeated mark in the MAC on Saturday, Sean. No question. It's uh, a busy time, <laughs> as you can see. As we made that convergence between fall and winter sports, all hands on deck. A lot of great things, a lot of winning, yeah. uh, just a great vibe. You know, it's great that we're able to get back face to face or mask to mask. But, you know, you see the energy level and the fruits of our labor. You know, we planted some seeds and now they're starting to grow. It may be surprised to some, but, uh, not to folks that have those expectations like uh, like ourselves. So so we're really excited about it. Really appreciate all the support. Huskies Invest is a big time uh, for us to make sure that we show up uh, needed areas within operational budgets and other types of things. So I want to thank people in advance for that, but just in general for their fan support. Thanks so much. It means so much for us, our student athletes, our program, our community. So let's keep this thing going. I want to continue to thank you. Thank you to Jason. Anya Buagu, uh, assistant coach here with the NIU football and dealing with the tight ends and, and coaching now back his alma mater. Great to have Jason on. And Rashawn Berno, NIU head men's basketball coach. Thank you for his time today. And TJ Furbach, a part of Sean's staff, senior associate athletic director, part of development and revenue generation. That was fun. Let's do it again next week. And uh, hopefully we got some wins to talk about, Sean. We got it. Let's go get after it, Andy. God bless. For Sean Frazier, I'm Andy Garcia saying thank you for watching NIU Weekly. We'll talk to you next week. Go Huskies.